If you've ever been passionate about something for a long period of time, you can look back 10 years ago and see how your passion has changed or evolved into something different than it is now. One way or another, no matter all the obstacles you face pursuing that passion, one point may stick out. It could be one time, one place, one event, one decision that changed everything. So for me, I'm seven years old and my sister Haley is dressing me up like a rock star. Haley, who's seven years older than me, gives me her shiny black Stratocaster guitar and some really cool shades. And she tells me to give her a pose like I'm just chilling on tour and I do it as if I've done it a thousand times. Now, <laughs> she, takes, she starts taking Polaroid pictures of me um, after she gives me this stuff. And I'm looking at myself in these pictures when she gives them to me, and it was like I was looking at myself for the first time. I was so infatuated by this idea that I could actually be a rock star. So from then on, I started going into Haley's room all the time and being more attentive to all the music that she listened to. She listened to all sorts of music from classic rock to alternative genres. She showed me bands like Coldplay, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Regina Spector, Kings of Leon, even underground YouTubers like Easto. Curious, soon enough, I started to look for my own music, quickly discovering bands like Safety Suit, The Fray, The Last Good Night, and so much more. I started to do my own videos, singing or playing covers like I had my own YouTube channel, but they never make it that far. And by the third grade, I was writing my own songs. Haley loved that I was so into music. We were the only two musicians in my family, and she loved making me feel like a rock star. We both spent a lot of time alone, and she would always be trying to put one of my YouTube videos online, or she'd always want to hear one of my songs. But ultimately, I was always there for her, and she was always there for me. Like any brother or sister, though, we fought. But compared to my sister Arielle, I like to spend more time with Haley because we just had more in common, and it wasn't just music. She was so smart and weird and actually listened to what I had to say. And I spent all the time I could with her up until she went to college. But slowly after that is when everything just started to change. It was different not having my sister around like she always used to be. And now I was in middle school, which is AKA the weirdest time in anyone's life, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, a year tosses and it turns, and I'm woken up in the middle of the night by my mom telling me that Haley's in the hospital. She was a Geneseo sophomore and had just had a manic episode. Now at this point in my life, I didn't really know a lot about what mental illness was or what having bipolar disorder meant. And when Haley would come home, I didn't notice any drastic changes in her. Um, we would still listen to music together or watch old episodes of The Office on a rainy day. But another year rolled by and I was still dealing with being this self-conscious, trying to be somebody who was a middle schooler. And now Haley has to take some time off from school. It was then that I started to notice that something was getting worse with her. She was an artist, so she usually spent a lot of time alone painting or drawing, and I thought it was normal for her to be that introverted. But the gaps between seeing her and not seeing her had become so long that when she did come home, I did start to notice that she wasn't the same person I usually knew her to be. It got to the point where she wasn't even making sense when she talked to me. I would ask her what we were having for dinner, and instead of giving me a logical response, she would tell me something totally different and then just walk away. This went on for about a month or so, and although it was nice just having Haley home, I had to shut her out. I couldn't understand what was happening to her, and to be honest, it was annoying me terribly. I wanted her to get better, I just wanted my sister back, but unfortunately that never happened. It was this cold October night in 2011, and Haley was turning 20 about two weeks before, and I go into her room to give her a kiss goodnight, wake up the next morning, and I go to school the next day, pretty normal. I come back from school and it doesn't seem like anyone's home. So I go upstairs and I take a shower. My mom shortly gets home after I'm in the shower and she does her usual rounds to see who's home and who's not. And she goes upstairs to Haley's room to check if she's there and she finds her. 
and I heard a scream from my mom that I'd just never heard in my life before, and somehow I just knew. My sister, my hero, my best friend had hung herself. So why am I telling you the story of how I lost the most important person in my life thus far? Well, the grief of my sister consumed me, and although it was hard dealing with that in the battle, something happened to me that wasn't necessarily on the seven steps of grief. For those of you who don't know them, they go something like shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, and finally acceptance. What about rebirth? After my sister's death, I started writing music, still drowning in grief, but writing lots and lots of music. I wasn't the same songwriter as before. Now my dream to become a singer-songwriter was personal, and I was carrying this mysteriously motivational guide on the outside with something like a missing hole on the inside. I wanted to know, music became the way for me to lift the void without Haley in my life anymore. I wanted to write music, but not just about her music, not just about myself. I wanted to find out more about Haley's life outside of what I knew too. I mean, <laughs> I mean, do you know what a song can do? The magic of a song is a guitar's way to mellow you, a singer's voice to make you melancholy, the stagger of bass to help you follow along. I knew what a song could do. It could change the way you feel within seconds and within minutes give you a totally different perspective to your current view in life. I wanted to be the speakers that could help somebody go to sleep at night. I wanted to be the headphones that let them get away from the name-calling bullies. I wanted to be the amp that made them play air guitar at a concert. It would be songs that would help me find the answers of my sister, and it would be writing that would help me share it all and hopefully help somebody else in doing so. So after this rebirth, I started to get involved with NAMI, or the non National Alliance on Mental Illness. And during my time with NAMI, now a freshman in high school, I got the chance to meet Hakeem Rahim, who struggled with bipolar disorder throughout his life and during college, just like my sister. At the event where we met, Hakeem spoke about how he coped with bipolar disorder using outlets like poetry and other healthy outlets. He was such an inspiration to me because he was living proof that someone like my sister could survive and be saved. I wanted to start speaking out with my music like Hakeem spoke out with his poetry. Eventually, Hakeem and I ended up working together on many occasions, becoming very good friends. And as I got to share my Haley songs with someone like Hakeem, I saw I got a taste of what my songs could do for people, how they change people's moods, how my feelings could actually touch somebody else's feelings and make them feel or think in a different way. It was a gratitude that I never experienced before. Still, a lot was going on in my head dealing with the fact that Haley was gone. Music felt right for coping, but still, I missed her uncontrollably. I was still grieving. I wanted to know why she had done it or what made her do it. And I realized that there was a part of my sister that I didn't know that was tearing her apart from the inside out. I needed to know more about this person I didn't know because I wanted to know more about the person because I wanted to help the person I did know. So what I do? Well, I started looking for answers, literally. That same freshman year, I contacted everybody I knew who was close with Haley, and I interviewed them. I interviewed college friends, high school friends, friends from her sleepaway camp, even neighbors, and I would take them out to lunch, to dinner, get coffee. I even Skyped with a handful of people because they were so far away. And everyone had a different story about Haley. Stuff I was surprised to hear, stories about this girl who was so kind, so humbled, so troubled, so noble. I mean, she loved people. She was the type of person to go into the city without telling anybody, buy sandwiches for homeless people, and talk to them about their day. 
She saw pain in others that was unbearable, and she hated it. It was like she could literally feel their pain, and that's probably why she could relate to them, because she knew how much pain could hurt, maybe. One of Haley's best friends describes her as feeling as if she didn't have a self. Now, I really tried to understand this. It seemed to be a part of her depression. But I thought about what having a self meant to me. Is it something that you can just have? Is it something that somebody else sees in you? Is it something that you have to earn? A self doesn't just have to mean personality. It's also dignity and health and a way of life. My sister lost her way dealing with a mental illness, but I can assure you that it wasn't because she didn't have a self. No, because she did, and it was one of the most beautiful that this world's ever seen. My sister lost her way because she couldn't see herself. Just because you have a mental illness does not mean that you cannot love yourself. In your legacy, you can create a way to love yourself and other people's selves too. This is a goal that I have when writing, actually. And as much as I've been talking about it, I'm not always the guy writing. Um, my whole life, I've constantly found that having something to write and listening to music all the time, it's maybe the person I am. Music has always been there for me um, in my darkest times. And as a writer, I'm just trying to have the same effect on somebody else. Yet, it's so much more than that, too. I write music. Because if I can write a song, if I can perform an original song for someone, and somebody listens to that song while they're on the break of throwing everything away, and they keep listening to that song, and they choose not to hurt themselves, they choose not to kill themselves, they see that this life can get better, that right now there is hope, and that this, love, this life is here to love and to enjoy, that life can get better, that there is hope, well, I've actually never written a letter to the people and artists and bands who have helped me in my darkest moments. So I know that I may never get a letter like that or an email like that or whatever. But you see, that's totally okay because I realized that music, the fact that I'm doing something that makes me more happy, pursuing something that makes me happier than anything else in the world, that makes me feel like I've honored my sister those are my unanswered answers, if you will. We all have to keep looking for our own answers, our own songs. There is a song out there for you, even in your darkest moments, dealing with a mental illness or not. So as I leave my mark on New York and I head out to California next year for school, I can't help but think about how my life is going to change and how my music will change. Music is going to the next level for me and it's just scary. So I know that I'm here talking to you all while I'm only 17, but please hear me out. I mentioned the seven steps of grief earlier, and you can relate my rebirth idea to the testing step of grief, which is when we look for realistic solutions in grief to help find us something that will accept grief or will help us find something to accept grief. The only thing about my grief was that none of it made any sense. I wasn't close to accepting anything yet, the steps of grief, dealing with my sister's death, that all happened after I realized that I had begun this rebirth, this mission to save people or to do something I was passionate about. But you see, regardless of what you call it, the steps of grief, they don't have to be this burden that they're made out to be. Grief is a process, and you have to deal with it in your own way. My way was just through writing indie music. And now there's nothing I wouldn't do, however, no matter how much I love music. I would trade it all to get my sister back. But I had to accept that I may not see her again in this world, but that she lives on in my music and I, and with every breath that I take. A song may not give you all the answers, but a song can give you a reason to keep looking anyway. It's your legacy that you carry, and that that is not a burden. Thank you. So I'm actually going to play you guys one of my songs right now. Uh, this is a Haley song. Um, just got to adjust this. Hold up.
They teach you this in music school, by the way. <laughs> oh, this is gonna work. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so there is a move to the next slide. Yeah, there it is. Um, so there is move to the next next slide. <laughs> this is the bridge. Um, I'm not going to sing it for you right now because I don't know how much time we have, but I'm going to start playing it and I'm going to keep it super simple so you guys can join in too. So, yeah. This is called Retracing Your Chalk. Back a slide. Yay. I was retracing your chalk Before you knew that it was a day I was retracing your chalk oh, Before you knew that it was a day I couldn't find a note can't see in none of a journal. Hey, there's so much of you I didn't know. Trouble coats. Who's this tree barking wide? She hide from us. I need to seek out unanswered answers. Disperse magnetic dust. I know now there's more to what a little brother is told. Hoarded memories won't stop suicide. I was retracing your truth. Before you knew that it was hidden, I was retracing your chalk. Oh. Before you knew that it was hidden, I took a thousand interviews. Shared stories and learned bittersweet truth. Hey, so much love for you. Yeah, I didn't know. Trouble coats. See this tree box, she saved so many lives, including mine. Including mine. Love was the paint you'd regulate. Now I've gone and seen it in the shade. Now I know why I've been retracing, tracing. I was retracing your chalk. man. 
Don't self-medicate. No one can recreate your love. One more time. Oh, beautiful stain. Don't self-medicate. No one can recreate your love. I, 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 beautiful stain. Don't self-medicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one can recreate your love. Oh, oh, oh. so much today.